if you've gotten all these search results from either a product search or a reverse search with tactical arbitrage and you want to know how to do proper product research to make sure you're buying the best possible products for your Amazon FBA business, then this is going to be the video you want to watch. If you're new here, my name is Tom with Path to Billions and on this channel, I'm documenting my financial journey and taking you along for the journey so we could succeed together. My channel is currently focused on Amazon FBA, so if you're looking to start or grow an Amazon FBA business, then make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. This is the third video in a mini series all about tactical arbitrage and how to use it to expand your Amazon FBA business from the comfort of your own home. The first two videos in this series were about product searches and reverse searches. So if you haven't seen those, I'll link them down in the description so you could check those out. In order to do proper product research, there are a few tools and softwares you are going to want to use to help you dive deep into the sales history of the products you get on your search results. Now, I recently did a video all about the softwares and tools I use to run my Amazon FBA business, so I would definitely recommend checking it out and I'll have it linked in the description. The first tool I'll mention is Keepa. This is a powerful tool that lets you dive deep into the sales history of an individual item that you are researching. I had mentioned in my video about softwares and tools I was using for my business that at the time I was not using it, but that I should. Since then I have signed up for it and I am absolutely loving it for doing good product research for online arbitrage and the wholesale list I get. The next extension I would recommend is Amazon Scout Calculator, which is a free Chrome extension. This is a tool that functions as a calculator to give you a rough idea of your profit margins and your ROI. It also gives you a rough idea of how many sales you have per month based on its sales rank. Also, I keep my phone's calculator open so I can double check the purchase price to make sure everything is accurate when doing product research. Next is Inventory Lab, which isn't essential to do product research, but the research function and the calculator that comes with it are amazing tools. In my opinion, if you already have Tactical Arbitrage, then you should already have Inventory Lab. Inventory Lab is the second software that you should be getting for your Amazon FBA business since it plays such an important role. The last thing we need is add a product page from Seller Central. The reason we have this open is just to check product restrictions to make sure we could sell the product. There are extensions for this, but I personally don't use any. A little bit of warning on the search results we are about to see before we get into it. Given the current situation going on in the world, the search results we are going to see are not reflective of normal search results. The reasons are twofold. One, demand is abnormally higher because everybody is stuck at home and ordering more products. Two, supply side is also restricted because of Amazon's decision back in March to limit inbound shipments. This makes it so much more apparent why you need to do proper product research and make sure we aren't taking the profit margins and ROI given to us at face value. So here we are on Tactical Arbitrage's dashboard. I had mentioned in my previous videos about Tactical Arbitrage that I do not use the view data tab over here. Instead, I go down to search manager. So if we click that, so you can see on search manager, you have your queued searches, you have your completed searches, you have your saved ones and your scheduled ones. So ideally, as I mentioned, if you're doing this full time, you want a ton of queued searches. So you always have search results to dig through. So we're going to click on completed to go look at the search results we got from the searches we ran in the previous two videos. And you can see this is why I prefer going to search manager versus view data. The searches we ran are broken down individually, whereas if you go to view data, it's all 20,000 items that you searched for in the past. So you want to go down here and hit view data. So the interesting thing to note is you actually are brought back to the view data tab, but what this does is it automatically applies the filters. So you are only getting the search results from the search that you just ran. If you went to view data and then you wanted to view your most recent searches, you would have to manually go through the filters and bring up these items. This just takes that step out of it and makes it easier for you. So as you can see here, there are a ton of search results and a ton of information that it gives you. And we are going to go through all this as we go through these search results. So the very first thing I look for is the pictures and make sure they match. So we can see over here a 24 pack of chalk and then over here 24 pack of chalk. Then the second thing we want to look at is the title to make sure they match. So you can see on target, it's sidewalk chalk, 24 count. And over here on Amazon, it's also sidewalk chalk. Then from there, you want to check pricing. So you see Target has it for $2.99. And then over here on Amazon, Amazon's price is 
So just based on my experience of doing this, most likely this price is elevated given the situation I was talking about earlier. But what we wanna do is click on this one, which is Amazon's title, and that'll bring up Amazon's listing. So we are on the listing and you can see there is no buy box. So we'll click this real quick. And you can see there's only one person selling it right now for $27.79. We'll close that. You'll scroll down and this is where Keepa comes in handy. We can look back and see what it's selling for in the past. And you can see here it was selling for $11.25 normally. So the price is almost three times the size it normally is. And if you look at the sales rank, the sales rank is usually pretty elevated. So this is a, definitely a product that I would skip over. Close this down and look at another one. So the second product we have here is actually the same product. So we'll scroll over and see the pricing and see it's at $32.99, which means it's also probably elevated. Click this real quick just to see its sales history. This one actually does have a buy box, which is a good sign. So if we look at Keepa, we can look at the pricing that I was previously selling for, and we can see it was selling for around $11.68 like the last one. So again, this is one that has an elevated price due to the given situation. So we're gonna skip this one also. So the next one we have is Hot Wheels, which I know I'm restricted in Hot Wheels, so I wouldn't even bother looking at this one, but just to give you an idea of what we're looking for. So the picture's the same, the title's the same. Let's see, selling for $30 right now, and it's $5 a target. So let's look at the sales history. So this one does have a buy box, which is a good sign. So on Keepa, we could see selling anywhere from $23.95. Down here, it's $23.99. So at the bottom, its pricing was $23.99. And you can see if we look at a month, each one of these little dips is a sale, roughly. So you can see how many dips there are in one month time period and see it has a good sales history. So the pricing is $23.43. So the next thing we want to do is go back to tactical arbitrage and look at the target listing to one, make sure it's still in stock and make sure the pricing is right. So we'll click that. And it looks like this is on sale and it is currently in stock. So this might be a potential product. So this is where I would pull up my phone's calculator and I would just do some quick math. So it's $4.99 at target. You, I have to pay sales tax. So you have 6.625%. Then after sales tax, I get about 9% off currently from gift cards. So times 0.91. And after taxes and discount, I would be about 484. So we'll go back to the Amazon listing, click Amazon Scout Calculator, which is one of the tools I was telling you about in the beginning. Click Run Amazon Scout Calculator. And you see it has an estimated sales of 50 per month, profit per unit of 1642, with a purchase price of $4.84. You can see here our profit per unit is $11.58. We have an ROI of 239%, which is crazy. So then the next step is to make sure we can actually sell this product. So what I do is go up here, copy the ASIN. Then this is where we wanna to go to the add product page. Click that, put it here, and then search. On this page, you wanna go over to select a condition, hit new, and then you can see I actually can sell this product. So. So far we verified the sales history on Amazon. We saw this product does actually have a price of around 20 to $25 normally, which is a good sign. It has a good amount of sales every month, which is another good sign. Then from there, we went to Target to verify the pricing, went back to Amazon to see our profit margin and ROI, made sure we could sell the product. And then next thing I like to do is just run the numbers again. And this is where Inventory Labs research function comes into play. So we have that same ASIN and we'll go over to Inventory Lab real quick. So this is their scout feature and you put in the ASIN, you hit search and it brings up all this information. So we can see here you have a target cost per unit, you have a sales rank, you have dimensions, weight. You can also see whether it needs prep. Then down here you have FBA offers, used offers, new offers, FBM. You could switch your profit from FBA to FBM depending on how you fulfill it. We could put in our cost of per unit here at 484. And again, you can see the numbers are similar to Amazon Scout Calculator. I prefer to run my numbers two or three times just to make sure I am actually getting a good deal. So based on all this information that we just went over, this would actually be a pretty good product to buy and sell. Let's keep going on tactical arbitrage and see if we can find a couple more products. So when editing this video, I noticed the reason that I was able to sell the Hot Wheels car is because the brand is actually Hot Wheels ID, as you can see here on Tactical Arbitrage. This is something you'll run into when sourcing for products, is that if you check the brand column, 
you'll see that sometimes the brand isn't 100% accurate to what the actual brand is. This will actually allow you to sell items from brands that you are normally gated in. So for instance, the one above it that says the brand is Crayola. If for instance, the Crayola had Crayola ID instead of just Crayola, you might then be able to sell it if you are normally gated in Crayola. So it's always good when you are sourcing to check this brand column to see if maybe the brand is misspelled or maybe it's listed under a different brand and then you could potentially sell it. Next we have Sonic the Hedgehog 12 inch Talking Sonic and you can see the picture is similar. Title is pretty similar except this one says 13 inch and this one says it's a plush. So let's click this real quick and see the sales history. So this one has no buy box but you can see it's listed for $89. So I'll scroll down here to see if that pricing makes sense. So you can see down here with Keepa that Amazon was actually selling this product for $20, but you could see they are not normally in stock. The other thing to notice is that this one has a relatively short sales history of only 97 days. The only reason I point that out is because if you have a shorter sales history, it's harder to know exactly how the product is going to perform when you start selling it. You can see based on this chart that when Amazon sells out, the price goes up to like $50 and this happens a lot. You can also see during these elevated prices that Amazon doesn't give the buy box to the higher pricing because it knows what it should sell for. So if we go over here, if we go to Target and start verifying the other information. So you can see this product is currently out of stock. What this most likely means is this is a collectible product, something that is hard to find in stores or online. So the people that can manage to find it can then send it into Amazon, be one of the few sellers on that listing and sell it for a premium. Let's close this one, take a look at a couple more and see if we can find some more products. This next product is a pretty good example because you can see this one is a baseball bat and a ball, whereas this one is just a ball. Next, we have unicorn horn chalk. And you can see it's a similar picture except one is in the product packaging. See, it sells for $4.50 at Target. On Amazon, it is listed for $21.97. Let's check the sales history. This is another good example. You could see here on Tactical Arbitrage, they were giving us a price on Amazon of $21.97. Then when we went on to Amazon, you can see the price is 1470 plus 327 shipping. So it's slightly lower than what the Amazon price actually is. So one of the things you can do when you're on tactical arbitrage, you can go over here and click the little refresh button and it will update the data to make sure everything is accurate. So we click that, now we'll scroll back over and you can see it updated to 1797. Let's go over here and check the sales history. And this is terrible sales history, so this is an item I went by. One, the sales history is only 10 days old, which is a huge red flag. So we can see this one has only sold three times. You have one here, two here, and the third one here. And most likely looking at this picture, this is someone that found this product in store and created their own listing with their own pictures instead of selling it on the original listing. So we'll close this one and go back to tactical arbitrage. I think the examples we went over so far are a pretty good representation of the range of possible scenarios you'll run into while doing search results on tactical arbitrage. The process boils down to making sure you're double and triple checking the information presented to you to make sure you're making the most informed decisions possible when sourcing for products for your Amazon FBA business. Start off by looking at pictures and titles to make sure those match between Amazon and your source website. That is the quickest way to filter out some of these results like the baseball bat we saw earlier. Then you want to look at the price you could buy for it and the price you could potentially sell for. Keep in mind if you watch my last two videos on Tactical Arbitrage and you set up the filter similar to mine, that Tactical Arbitrage will already be returning results to you that meet your minimum profit potential. Then you want to go onto the listing on Amazon and you want to check the Keepa graph. You want to check to make sure the sales history is long enough to give you a good representation of what the product will do once you send it in. You want to check to make sure the price that it's currently at has been consistent over the past couple weeks or a couple months to make sure the price isn't gonna suddenly drop when you send it in. You also wanna check whether Amazon has sold this item in the past and if Amazon has sold it, what their price is. And you wanna see whether Amazon has a regular history of selling out of it. For instance, the Sonic we looked at had a short history of Amazon being in stock and then selling out of it and then the price elevating. So that is a product even though Amazon does have it in stock occasionally, it is a great product to buy because as soon as Amazon sells out, the price doubles and sometimes triples. Then after you've checked the sales history, you want to go over to the source retailer and you want to verify pricing information, whether it's the same item and whether it's in stock. From there, you'll calculate your finalized price based on discounts and sales tax. And then you take that number and you want to go over to either Amazon Scout Calculator or 
inventory labs scout feature and plug that number into the calculator to see what your ROI and profit margins are. If everything lines up and makes sense to you, then congratulations, you just found a product to potentially purchase for your Amazon FBA business. At this point, if you found a product to potentially purchase, you may be wondering how many units should you purchase? And that depends on where you are at in your business. If you are relatively new to Amazon and you have a smaller monthly budget, then it doesn't make sense to go and invest all your money into one product. One, it's just a bad idea to put all your eggs into one basket. And two, you want to diversify the individual items you are buying and selling. You'll generally get more sales selling five different items than you will selling one item. Also, keep in mind that every item you are buying and then selling is a learning opportunity for you to further your knowledge so you are better at sourcing products and selling products in the future. If you do have the budget to buy more products from a source retailer, then the two things you want to look at are how many sales a month and how many competing sellers. If there's 30 sales a month and three competing sellers, consider each seller is going to get roughly 10 sales. If you didn't see my first two videos on product searches and reverse searches, I'll leave the playlist over here. I hope this video helps you guys expand your Amazon FBA business. And if you did find it helpful, a like is always appreciated. Any questions or future topics you want covered, just leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And thanks for watching.